Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. My name is Da Vinci Jeremy. I'm in the pipe 5x5. Five five. I'm staying live here in Dubai. And I'm going to tell you, man, I really think Bitcoin and Ethereum has hit the bottom. And I'm going to show you how to buy this bottom. And uh, make sure you watch all the way to the end because we're also going to do our news ramp. And you don't want to miss that as well. Okay, so if you want to trade, if you want to buy uh, and sell Bitcoin and Ethereum, the best places to do that is OKX at DaVinciJ15.com. That's OKX.DaVinciJ15.com or Bybit.DaVinciJ15.com. Links in the description below where you can, you know, get 40000 from OKX and 30000 from Bybit by um, signing up today and um, putting a, a specific initial deposit. Okay. Woo wee Alrighty, let's get on with it. I'm gonna be um, showing you guys some cool things here. Okay, so first off, right? If you watch the other videos, there's lots of, of evidence that we've hit the bottom. Um, we've talked about, you know, uh, indicators that, sh that are showing at the bottom, indicating indication. Uh, you can see right here that with the the Bollinger Bands, they've tightened on the daily and now expanded moving upwards this is a positive sign the positive sign that bitcoin is about to break out um uh, and uh, head in the upward direction now because we had a lot of bearish um, sentiment right you can expect some sort of pullback with bitcoin so um i would suggest that you start nibbling anywhere um below these levels right here let me just show you right here below approximately uh, $16,988 or something like that. Approximately around there, that's where you should start buying down on Bitcoin. Start buying it and your stop loss, your stop loss would be, um, if you um, if you could just, if you buy below that, probably a little bit lower than here, where it's almost 5%. Um, you wanna just go to almost 5% there and that would be it. So if you want to do that, if you want to take a bigger risk, you could take 5% of your total investment portfolio. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be um, buying all the way down to that level and stop lossing it um, at approximately um, the $16,000 level. Why is that? Because um, you can see that we've created what's created a, a nice little bit of a W here. So let me just get rid of the magnet first so that we can do this. You can see that we've created a nice bit of a W. And so when we break out from the W right here, right? So this is the breakout level. That means that Bitcoin can head um, as high as uh, approximately right uh, up here uh, based on the height of the W. So that's a nice um, area to buy but i think this is a nice area to buy and hold this thing uh, all the way up to the 20k area that's where i think bitcoin is um headed after we break and it's going to take a while don't don't get it twisted right um it's not going to be a fast move but i think we will get there um sometime in the next uh the, f the first quarter or early uh second quarter um of of this year Another point, right, that you have to realize that this is the bottom is that, come on, we can see on the weekly that we have divergence, right? This was a, a, a low and then this was a deeper low, but it actually prices, prices, right, were deeper low. But the indications is that the, the momentum is not as hard. The push down is not as hard as the last push down. So that means, right? that uh there's not enough sellers the sellers are all gone and so we can see that bitcoin is ready for a big pump uh, another cool thing if we head back to the weekly is that we can see that we have not been significantly or weekly over the um the week the 13 ema in uh since uh last year november of last year so a break above that 13 ema means we'll stay above that 13 MA probably for a little bit while for a little while and probably until we head all the way back up to the 200 weekly moving average so I wouldn't be surprised if you see a 25k price uh, on Bitcoin um, sometime 
this year. Alrighty. Um, let's uh, before I go on to Ethereum, um, if you if you don't want to do the trades, right, you can always head over to here and uh, and get these uh, these licenses. Um, we can see that the prices have um, been have been significantly reduced, right? For you guys, if you want to um, buy the license, um, you can also have a free trial with uh, the uh, this license. So head over there before the um, the prices go back up. Okay, let's head over to Ethereum. Oh my goodness! Well, Ethereum has broken right up to where I was pointing out the resistance was. I removed some of the um my uh my uh what's it called uh, support lines and support and and i've uh, only left the top resistance you can see we moved right exactly where i told you guys we would move to with ethereum um and ethereum is has still got some more juice in it before we um before you go and jump in and buy and they don't jump in and buy right markets that are running you just you just don't do that because that's, that's the number one way to get wrecked is to, to chase markets don't chase waterfalls because you're going to you're going to get um, you're going to get uh, liquidated real fast so you're looking for a pullback here to be um, interested in uh, ethereum before you actually can buy so once we see one uh, we'll talk about how you're going to enter in i really think that you should wait for a pullback sometime uh, somewhere maybe in this um this cluster zone you can start um Right about here, around the the the, the uh, twelve uh, twelve hundred and seventy dollar area, approximately. Uh, you want to get into in this area. Uh, if we pull up the VPVR, we might see a better uh, location. Yeah, there we go. There's a better location lower um, lower at the twelve thousand the twelve hundred twenty nine. Uh, well, that's the one thousand two hundred uh, and twenty dollar area this this area is probably going to get refilled before we actually uh, start to take off so i would suggest you wait until that uh, occurs now there's no guarantees from management that that can happen so um yeah um you you decide on whether you want to wait but i think we've come to a, a clear bottom both on Bitcoin and Ethereum, you just need to, um, you know, plan your uh, trades, your day, your trades, and you know, you have to accept that if it leaves without you, if this train leaves without you, it just leaves without you, man, right? Because, um, oops, when the when you miss the boat, you miss the boat, but when the industry industry players miss the boat, they bring the boat back. <laughs> so. Alrighty, well, let's get on to the the news rant. But before before we do, remember, um, I'm part of the Fitburn. I'm the Fitburn's uh, ambassador uh, to crypto. I I really believe in this project because um, you know they this they've they've uh, learned from the mistakes from Stepin and they've uh, you know re redesigned this application, the um, the fitness uh, workout to earn application, so that it's sustainable. And so. Uh, this is why I'm supporting this application, and I, I really think that um, uh, I, I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be because um, I work out, and if you do want to see my workouts and stuff like that, I some time to time post on Instagram. So make sure you find me on Instagram, Instagram, uh, Graham Da Vinci J15. You can just uh, search me from under Da Vinci J15, and you can find me there. So uh, yeah. Follow me on Instagram. You can see I will be posting my workouts and so forth as well there. Uh, so, yeah, you can see how hard I'm working out. Okay, let's um, head over to the first news of the day. Um, one of the things is um, blockchain is finally fixing the cross-chain bridges. Now, what they want, what they're talking about in this article is that they're going to, they want to, they want to, I really think that this is something that needs to be done on a, um, a, a a consensus basis. Basically, they want to be able to transfer assets quickly to another chain without having to create some sort of bridge, software bridge, software bridge on the uh, on the uh, smart chain. So, for example, on Ethereum, you have to write an application in Solidity to bridge with, for example, um, Polygon. Now. If there's a, a problem, if you wrote that application or that code, that smart contract incorrectly, 
there could be exploits or problems with that uh, smart contract. And on top of that, right, some uh, 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 of the chains, such as uh, uh, Cardano, do not support Solidity. So if you write it in Solidity for uh, Ethereum, well, it works on Polygon, but it doesn't work on Cardano. Right. So that's that's the key problem. So what they're trying to fix is coming up with a a a, a centralized s system, right, that basically works for all different blockchains, no matter what the the um, the uh, the programming language in order to write contracts is, whether it has one or not. And um, have it a sta as a standard. So. In order to protect against bridges exploits, right, which we talked about, uh, Philson, Philin, Philin, uh, says it's uh, necessary to integrate decentralized cross-chain communications that's similar to the actual consensus mechanism used by blockchains themselves. Doing so would make them significantly safer, he argues, because it would allow for cross-chain communications to benefit from the same underlying security that protects each blockchain transaction. So as I was saying, right, what they're trying to, to build here is just a, a sec, almost like a layer zero that works in interoperable between different cryptocurrencies so that they can transfer your assets rapidly across to any any chain that gets that that uses that layer zero. Now, the question is, do we really need it? And I, in my humble opinion, I don't think so. I think um, all it will give is that allow us to um, to have um, a chain, a blockchain that comes along and does maybe something better, and then we could quickly move to that asset, right? That's all we get, right? Um, maybe you get um, some um, smart contracts execution, remote execution of smart contracts on a secondary chain. But, you know, um, I, I don't know if that, that's something that we really, really need. We'll see in time if this, if this gets pulled off. And I, I don't know if they were going to be able to pull it off. It's going to be difficult because they have to, um, they're going to have to exclude certain chains that don't, that, that are not going to be interoperable with them. And then some chains will have to make changes in order to work with this layer, new secondary layer zero um, uh, blockchain that does basically interoperability between all the different chains. Hong Kong wants to become crypto hub despite industry crisis. Okay, so they're, they're like, I would say no to this, <laughs> period. No, I want to say no. Do not, if you have a crypto company and you are dumb enough to go to Hong Kong, I know there's no taxes, but if you're dumb enough, you oh my God. Do you know do you know where Hong Kong is based? What what country is Hong Kong part of? That's right, China. Okay, so they kicked out, uh, you know, mining. Right? They make it illegal for you to own crypto in China. So what makes you think that that's a logical thing to go to? <laughs> there is no sense of logic there. So, so thanks, China, but no thanks. <laughs> Here's another article uh, from um, the Fed, former Fed chair, Alan Greenspan, said crypto is too dependent on the greater fool theory to be desirable investment. OK, so what is the greater fool theory? Right. Before we we make fun of this, because, <laughs> you know, you know how I play. Right? <laughs> so we need to we need to define the greater fool. And the greater fool is means that you're going to find somebody else to buy an asset that has no value, okay? Or to buy an asset at a higher price that has value, but you know, at a, a higher and a higher price, right? Because I mean, we don't, you could say the greater fool theory exists with housing, right? Stocks, everything, right? All right, so with that said, right? The reason why we buy Bitcoin and knowing that the price will go higher and somebody will buy at a higher price is because we know that it's going to be money. And so somebody else is going to figure it out the value of Bitcoin, that it is going to be money and buy it as well, but at a higher price, 
Well, because they took too long to figure it out. <laughs> so, so that is the that is the reason why we buy it now at a low price because we're smart. We know what it's going to do. We know it's going to be the money. So that is why we are buying it today and holding it to sell it to someone later on because they were going to need it to buy stuff, right? Because it's the best form of money to save their assets in because it's the best form of money to do transactions across the world because it's the best form of money. That's why we're buying it. Not for the greater tool theory, because we know people will buy it to do the following things, which is save and transfer wealth because it's best form of money. Okay. Now, another funny thing that um, um, Alan Greenfriend said, which was an obvious statement, was the collapse of FTX was not the result of lack of risk management, inadequate uh, accounting procedures, or some failure inherent to crypto. It was purely fraud. Duh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that one, because <laughs> I couldn't figure that out by myself. I need a Fed chairman to figure that out for me. <laughs> oh, and here's here's my favorite line from a Fed a chairman is because I hear this all the time. A recession doesn't appear to be the most likely outcome at this time. Okay, other than what's a Jerome Powell. Coming out and saying, uh, yeah, I think we might have a mild recession. Please name a time when a Federal Reserve chief or any former Federal Reserve came out and said a recession is coming. Let's think about that for a second. Oh, that's right. It has never happened. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to you on this one. <laughs> okay. Bitcoin hash rate reaches all-time high. Boost could lead to record-setting difficulty increase. Okay. The, the statement is, like, um, obvious, right? Like, oh, yeah, um, we have clouds that uh, that are very dark and could result in in uh it could lead in rain yeah dude yeah of course <laughs> i mean yeah there's 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 a high chance of rain right now i i say rain and because uh, the difficulty could increase or could not because what happens is if if somebody turns off a bunch of uh, uh, machines between now and the next difficulty uh adjustment then it won't adjust right that's the thing right you got to keep that in mind so the same thing with the clouds right i mean if there's dark clouds there's a high chance of rain <laughs> so, so it just seems it just seems uh, this the statement is, is uh is just an obvious one now i'm just playing with the the writer but uh this is a good thing right um this means that bitcoin's stronger every single day it's going to make it difficult to make any kind of changes in the past more and more so and that's what uh, proof of work does it ensures that you can't make changes to the past that's what proof of work is about now it can't be that cannot live that ability to uh, to, to prevent changes in the past must exist alongside a, an additional um, feature of Bitcoin, because without that additional feature, proof of work is no is useless. And what is that? You can't have upgrades. What? But Bitcoin was upgraded. Yes, soft fork, right? But not hard forks. We can't do hard forks. Why is that? Because once you do a hard fork, your hard fork can say, you know what? This transaction that was um, done at this specific time. Uh, we're going to change, we're going to ignore that in all the code. And they just put out the hard fork that says that this transaction didn't exist or didn't happen. And anybody who says differently is lying. And that's why you can't have hard fork upgrades in Bitcoin. 
And this is part of the reason why the developers decided to keep the one megabyte blocks is because if we change that one megabyte block with a fork, well, what can, what, what's, what's stopping us from doing other forks? Hardware forks, hard forks. Yeah, and so that does whatever we wanted it to. No, can't do that. That's why the developers went with, hey, you know what? We're not doing hard forks, only soft forks. Only the forks that affect the um, miners. That's it. And so this, uh, this allows Bitcoin to stay as a consensus algorithm alongside with um, um, mining, right? And uh, the, the hash rate and mining Bitcoin in order to ensure, with the proof of work, in order to ensure that transactions can never be changed. And that's the only way to do it. So now you learned something new. I hope you did. And if you did, make sure you hit the like, you hit the subscribe, hit the bell button and all because like man my subscriptions are falling off so really would help they help a lot if you subscribe to this video alrighty well I hope you enjoyed today's show right I know I did I always do when I come out here so make sure you, you stay tuned for the next show because it's going to be lit as always take it easy <laughs>